I asked the locals here in Split to help me put together a list of top things to do in Split, according to them, so I can share it with you. Also, as a bonus, at the end of the video, I will share a tip with you I'm not entirely sure they want me to reveal. So here it goes. All right, let's start with the obvious. Most likely, you're in Split because of the palace. So, uh, wh where's the palace? Palace is right in front of us. It starts with that corner tower over there. This structure here is the palace? Yes, All yes. Right. It was built by Roman Emperor, whose name was Diocletian. Right. It's not a museum, it's not empty shell, but people live inside there. What do you mean people live there? What do you mean? Uh, people of Split, Within they live inside there. Within the palace? Within the palace. Moreover, their apartments sometimes share walls with this ancient Roman palace. In some cases, it's inside people's houses, which is which sounds really romantic, like uh, you're living in a house with a wall which was built 17 centuries ago. Here is the model of what it looked like. Where are we right now? We are somewhere here. Things are built here on several layers. First was below the ground, a huge maze that forms the understructure of the palace. From here, you climb up to the peristyle the ancient square built more than 1700 years ago and still very much in function today. About the Sphinx, I mean, this is the oldest object in town today. This piece is about 3600 years old. Everybody walking through Split, at one point they have to pass through here. It's good to know uh, all, all the shortcuts, you know, because when it's too crowded, then, then you can yeah. bypass it. Those tiny streets are packed with equally tiny shops where you can buy local crafts, wine and olive oil, and best of all, local chocolate. The Euclidean Palace and Split City Center are part of the UNESCO World Heritage List. There are two main reasons. One, as I said, this is one of the biggest and one of the best preserved Roman palaces anywhere in the former Roman world. The second reason, people are still inside there. Within the palace, guarded with the Romans and lions, is the Cathedral of Split. This bell tower is the tallest one in Dalmatia. It took 28 years to build it, in turn from 19th to 20th century. And I'm gonna climb it all the way to the top for you. Coming up. When you finally make it to the cathedral's spiky dome, you'll be rewarded for your effort with some stunning views. Uh, this square is known for uh, opera performances, including Aida. Yeah. So they use 36 year old uh, stage prop as part of the stage. That brings us to the point that you should probably return to the palace at night and hang out around those narrow streets and old squares. The place is packed with coffee shops, bars and restaurants. The wait can sometimes get a bit long, but keep in mind that the place was built 17 centuries ago. Marian Hill is a pretty large park that provides a great break from the city below. I'd say it's an absolute must-do when in Split. 
It has all sorts of trails where you can hike, jog, rock climb, or ride a bike. And there is something for all levels of fitness. If you get tired, no problem. There is plenty of places where you can rest and enjoy the view. And if you're just not up to any of that, you can always take a little train that will take you to one of the park's quiet little beaches. While hiking around Marianne, you may want to check St. Jerome's, a diminutive church built on the steep southern cliff of the hill. Just behind it, there are steps leading you right to the 15th century hermitage caves. It's a complex of natural caves with some man-made structures built straight into the cliff. I'm sure they've got plenty of views in the past, but even though they are locked now, you get to enjoy some memorable news. If you visit Diocletian's palace, a huge statue of the local bishop just outside the northern gate of the palace probably won't go unnoticed. The sculpture was created by Ivan Mestrovich a sculptor born not very far from Split. Only about a mile and a half from the statue, you can visit Meshlovich Gallery, housed in his former residence. There's also another location dedicated to the sculptor just down the street, and the ticket you buy is good for both. When in Split, you can take advantage of about a dozen city beaches. There is one right below the gallery, but I like the one across town. Even though it sits right next to the port, the water is surprisingly clean. If you're up to it, you can try yourself at that game too. Fun, but like most things, it seems easier than it is. Right by that same beach, on top of the cliff, sits a real outdoor movie theater. Along with primarily foreign film program, there's popcorn and beer, like there should be, and some sublime moonlight to make ordinary things, well, anything but the ordinary. The locals here are particularly proud of their extra-dried, hyper-smoked, tangy prosciutto. Where to have it? Well, there's this hidden little place within the palace called Tri Volta, meaning, obviously, three balls. While most people would just sit down and enjoy the view from here, I poke my nose into their miniature kitchen, hardly any bigger than a larger bedside cabinet. but. It holds some real treasures here. They serve their prosciutto the old-fashioned way, sliced by hand and on a metal plate, with a no-nonsense side of pickles and black olives. I tell you one thing, it smells great. I forgot to tell you, the only silverware you get is a toothpick. If you use your hands, well, nobody gets shocked around here. Ah, coffee. Why would you have the regular, astringent local coffee when you can have one of these marvelous creations? 
true necessity is the mother of invention, but boy, did I get this one right. Whilst the plate itself is certainly interesting enough to keep you busy, you can hop on a bus, ferry or speedboat and visit all sorts of places. Lakes, waterfalls, canyons, caves, little towns, islands, beaches, most of them within one hour of travel time. Before I get on to my extra tip, if you got any value from this video, please consider subscribing or hit that like button. By doing that, you help drive YouTube algorithm to show this video to other people too, which in turn helps sustain my efforts in creating more videos like this one. Now the final tip, Split is a peninsula. And during the tourist season, there are way too many people trapped in a minuscule city center. So where do all the locals hide at the season? Well, they mostly hang out along the peninsula's northern shore. There's a whole different life here, away from the tourist hustle and bustle. My favorite, hanging out by the local boche court. The players get quite passionate and involved in it. And even a special measuring tool has been devised to make up for the lack of VAR. But at the end, it always ends with a friendly handshake.